I don't remember hearing how she was described. I remember reading the monologue, and I don't even remember the character description, because to me, everything I needed to know was in that monologue. And then whatever I needed to do to make her funny was filling in the character, because to me, you know, the monologue was all information about, you know, well, my mother had killed herself, and my stepfather was in prison, and that's how I ended up living in New York or something, you know, in a car with a crack addict or like meth addict, I don't remember. Um, you know, and then he OD'd and died and, you know, the information was so, it was like one trauma after another that I decided, well, the only way this is funny is if, okay, so, you know what, that reminds me of my friend from college who, you know, had to leave school because her parents didn't, thought it was making her irreligious and they didn't want to pay for it anymore and she had to work in a nursing home. And, but she never got down about it, ever. It was always like, it's so funny, you know, where I work, this one woman, she's so funny because she can't think straight anymore and it's very funny. Like, she, like, found things to love about working in the nursing home. And it's like, what an attitude. I always admired that, it stuck with me. And I thought, okay, that's what this person needs to have, that attitude of, doesn't feel sorry for herself at all. And it's very funny that if she also thinks like, well, as is the case with everybody, <laughs> ended up, you know, living in a car with a drug addict who overdosed, you know. So I just thought that would also be funny if she thought, well, like, I'm normal like everybody else. I have the same experiences that everybody else has. Mother commits suicide, dad's in jail, you know, and then it's just all not a big deal. Do you think that's how it was written? Or I do don't know. You... Maybe. And maybe that's why when I did it that way, they're like, yeah, that's what we meant. I don't remember. I don't remember. But that... That, to me, was what informed the whole character. So it's right out of person. the box, that's who she was. Yeah, just fully committed to, it's okay. And even when confronted with, I'm not sure I feel like it's, the character doesn't feel like it's okay, but plowing through it, and that can be funny too. Did you feel that Phoebe was um, equivalent to the other characters? Um, mm, yes and no. I mean... You know, that first week, you know, Jimmy Burroughs, I still wasn't sure that I wasn't going to get fired by the end of the week. And there was this one rehearsal where, you know, I have to deliver this monologue, and Jimmy just pitched ideas, you know, he would pitch things. And he doesn't expect every one of them to work either. But he pitched this one, and he was pretty insistent, like, deliver that monologue, sit under the table. <laughs> deliver that monologue. What? Yeah, just sit under the, that'll be funny, because you're out there, sit under the table. <laughs> and I had to sit under the table, and they're all sitting, uh, I can't see anybody, so now I'm giving this monologue to who? I mean, I'm just sitting under a table now. And I thought, oh no. And it's also just, now I'm really not connecting with anybody. And I had heard part of the discussion was, how do we convince the audience that she belongs in this group? Like, that's a problem. That's a problem. Why are these people that we identify with friends with this person? And I kept saying, well, because they say so. <laughs> you know, if Monica likes her, we're going to like her. If they like her, if they say so, then, you know, it's going to, that'll be why. Um, so I, I, I didn't feel like putting me under the table helped that case, <laughs> or, you know. Um, and then we did the run through, and afterward, David Crane, because they're so sweet, David and Marta, you know, and so respectful also. Again, lucky enough to be working with really, really respectful, you know, writer-producers. And uh, they went, um, I'm not sure um, the choice, Lisa, if this was your choice, it's fine to try. I'm not sure that the choice to sit under the table um, is the one that best serves the scene. Um, and I said, that's all right. No, that's fine. That's okay. You know, I wasn't going to say, well, it wasn't my idea, <laughs> even though I wanted to. It's like, please don't blame me. Please don't fire me for this choice. <laughs> I'll throw him under the bus. He's too powerful, I know. No one's going to get rid of him. Um, and so they, uh, yeah, so, and I really was expecting to be fired that night. And I wasn't. And instead, I got to sit up with the other people. <laughs>
I had to just, you know, believe, no, she belongs. She belongs. She belongs because she does. Because she and Monica have been roommates forever, and Monica's the kind of person who sticks with someone. You know? Um, yeah, but I think Marta and David, I haven't really heard them speak about this too much, but I think they also, like the writers also were, were also trying to solidify her, you know, with the group.